Uh, and you are live. We are live. Let's take action. Good afternoon. Hello, Jan, and hello, everyone. <laughs> Me and Rich, we are having a bit of a trouble today. We we need a team and like pump us up before we came here. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say, hopefully, the internet connection is good because I'm not home. I'm traveling. Hopefully, my camera is kind of good. So yeah, I'm in this gorgeous living room. I can play keys. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope you guys are all doing good. Could you please let us know that you can hear us, you can see us, so we know that everything is working well. Let me actually, I'm going to go and check this myself. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. It's normally pretty good. It's normally pretty good. You've stole my living room this time. Yeah. And normally yeah. you give me a hard time about the piano in the background. Now I'll get it to get to do it to you, which is good. <laughs> uh, your little Katie. Hello, Anna. This is Katie. Katie is um, my daughter's friend. Everybody's watching us, Rich. <laughs> okay. So let's, before we go into the charts, let's maybe talk about how is the week going, just... I don't know, let us guys know how is your week going? Um, should I say how mine is going first? Go for it. Start? Let's lead by, lead by example. We, oh, oh, pressure, no. Um, so, yeah, my week, I hate traveling. Like, see that trader's lifestyle of traveling, trading, you know, going places and that freedom? I just don't like it. I love my office space my morning routine, like I just love doing the work from home. So I think that kind of that kind of lifestyle is definitely not for me. And I'm feeling the time zones difference. Um, so it's only like two hours ahead. But it's just like, it's no good. It is no good. So yeah, I definitely feel it. Um, and trading this week hasn't been really the, the greatest. So is that because you've been traveling or is it because the markets have been like, i think it's both different. i think it's really both but the markets are honestly driving me a little crazy because we are seeing a lot of strength in dollar um and it is kind of yeah i was trying to catch the bullish run but there's no bullish run to catch <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i'm i'm kind of in that situation where um yeah, and it's like I wanted to go into sale opportunity, like I saw it, but the market never gave me the entry. Mm -hmm. So it's just, yeah, it is what it is. So, but yeah, this you, week for me, said not last the week. Like last week, you even said, like you took no losing trades last week. Oh, yeah, like, I did. There's a, there's a, there's a losing trade coming. I know it. And then this week is like, pow, like literally just nose dies, yeah. selling pressure, and um, yeah, it's difficult, right? It is, but I mean, look, it's it's just um, kind of transparency because I'm going to do the weekly review and I'm going to post my weekly review on my Telegram group because I want the people like to see, not like no, not necessarily like the numbers, but it's just mm -hmm. like how I process things when I do the weekly review, and um, and just show a little bit of transparency how I deal with my emotions when I go through some losses where I take the losses and. It's still like all together. I think I managed my risk pretty well. So I can't say that I went, you know, crazy bananas and I completely messed up my, my risk and everything. So no, no, no. Um, it's just like, I would say dealing emotionally, just a little bit sore because, you know, last week was great great trades, great execution, no emotions. And this week, a little emotional maybe too emotional you know like because the lossy is really yeah it is what it is so yeah, but I you're think traveling. Really... like you're traveling like you can't expect to be like your best self when you're not sleeping mm. in your own bed when you're not yeah. eating the normal food you'd normally eat like walks in the countryside everything's different so that's got to have an effect on your trading like you've got to take a little bit of pressure off you yeah. and yeah. say you know i'm not in the same place yeah i mm. think yeah, even coffee doesn't taste the same. Um, <laughs> it's like, um, I would say, 
yeah, it's definitely harder than it looks because everyone is like, you know, when, when we talk about trading, is that time freedom, you can do whatever and that. But honestly, I don't think I will ever want to travel and trade. If I would not trade at all this week, it would be a good, actually, decision. So see, next time when I'm going to travel, I'm not going to trade. And then I'll be able to compare. But obviously, we do need to take the, like, honestly, we need to look at the markets. Like you said, mm -hmm. the markets are kind of rubbish. You know, it's it's a little bit tough at the moment, at least for myself. So, yeah, we need to take that. And, you know, when we do the analysis of our, you know, everything, cons and cons, you know, traveling and trading, then we need to take uh, in consideration the markets as well. And uh, at the moment, it's just not marketing. <laughs> yeah, hasn't stopped me though. I'm uh, I'm still having a go at trying to long the pound. This is this my analysis makes sense to me. We're in a big daily zone, waiting for the candle close. Get this beautiful little pin bar, and I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, this is this. I'm just I'm stuck to that bias of there's got to be some profit taking on a Friday. We've done nothing this whole week. If we go to the four hour. Look at the mm -hmm. strength of the dollar. It's just done like pretty much the entire week. It's just done nothing but sell yeah. off. And we've yeah. dropped from highs to lows. We've dropped like 2%. This is massive. Like this is such a big change from um, like GBP to USD. So I've taken a couple of losses on the way down. They were good trades. I'll take them again um, because I know like over 100 trades I'd do all right on. But mm -hmm. at the moment, is this selling pressure ever going to end? I don't know. I keep waiting for this big, like we talked about it before, but this big like V-shaped recovery all of a sudden. Yeah. But maybe we get a small pullback today. Yeah. Maybe we have got news, um, Do we still have news today? Because I haven't checked mm -hmm. the calendar. Do we still have something? Yeah, in an hour and a half we've got red. Um, let me double check this. In an hour and a half it should be. Yeah, it's the premium consumer sentiment on the dollar red news event so hour and a half we might see some and that might be the catalyst that actually pushes the charts back up to to like create a little bit of dollar weakness yeah. well look at that there is someone who is also in the gu long so that's good <laughs> bump it up <laughs> yeah, yeah, good luck to us. Yeah. okay let's let's put the trades on guys if we just you know 10 lots each <laughs> Maybe we might move the market then. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but wait, what time it is? What time it is where you are at? One twenty-five. Yeah, so half past three in here. Um, hmm. Yeah, because it's Friday. You know, mm -hmm. it's Friday. Although, no, you know what I'm thinking about? Because you're saying the people will take profit. The sellers will, will take mm -hmm. profit. If I'm not right, like wrong, there's the thing called "Thank God It's Friday," isn't it? Right. It's like an ICT thing, isn't it? Like, to, I think it is. It is because, like, and I think the idea is if market has been like bullish or bearish, then on Friday it's kind of recovering something a little bit. So I, I haven't like, I don't know really the concept of that, but I know that there's thing called "Thank God It's Friday." So maybe it's right. not doing any recovering at the moment. <laughs> not, not at the moment. Okay, well, Patrick says that um, there might be a pullback on DXY, so that's a good thing then, because if there's a pullback on DXY, that means um, that, wow. yeah, it needs wow. a pullback, yeah. right? Yeah. That's, that is, nice. I mean, I never thought we'd see pound back in 124s again. Like, when we were 127, yeah. 128, we were so, like, bullish. We were, we were like, the pound was just going up. If we look at like the daily chart, you know, once mm -hmm. we start breaking up above these highs, break and close, it just looked yeah. like this was going to 130. And then the market just melted downwards. And so I like looking at these daily zones and, and working out mm -hmm. like maybe the market is pushing to like this daily zone. Yeah. And so at the moment we can see that we're using this daily zone here. If we were using this daily zone right here, to me, we've already had a lot of reactions around this price. Mm -hmm. So now this has failed. I'm now looking at this daily zone. But I can see that this is only a small pullback because it makes sense that the market could now do that. It makes sense that the market can pull back and go lower because this is a this is a nice mm -hmm. daily zone up here now. Like, look at all these, yeah. these areas. So that, that's kind of my thoughts. I'm, I'm looking for a small move back up and 
Yeah, mm. we're still bearish on the higher time frame though. Yeah. You know what? I, yesterday when I journaled, so I, where's my journal? I don't know where to put it. But anyhow, so, because I would, I would be even willing to read it out. But what I did is, see how when we are seeing the daily levels, the higher time frame, time frame levels, and at the moment, let's say we are trying to buy pound. And what happens is you put that inside of you, kind of fake hope that it's going to go and you are looking for a next zone for the next zone so i put down that i always need to remember that market is like 50 50 so it's like you can either buy or you can sell so it's like a 50 50 chance in whatever you do right so and for myself is like i do see that pound is gonna go bullish because actually i had swing set up on i took partials and then it hit my stop loss so basically mm -hmm. i ended and a little minus because of the swaps and all that, which is fine. But the thing is, again, because for myself, I'm like, yeah, but I think the pound is having a zone in there, the zone lower, the zone lower. So I'm like looking, I'm like, I could buy from here, from here, from here. And every single time I'm going to buy, I'm just going to maybe fail. So today I actually said, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to try to buy. And the thing is, and then I say to my journal, but what if tomorrow, well, because I journaled yesterday. So what if today is the day when actual pullback happens and I'm going to miss it because I said, oh, I'm just going to give up. So, um, yeah, I think we're when I mean, trading is tough. OK, trading is not easy. And I will never be, you know, saying in here, hey, trading is so easy. You can make so much money. And, you know, it's like the easiest thing in the world. Well, no. Um, so when I was journaling, I really said to myself that I need to be really strict to myself and not to put that fake hope in it mm -hmm. and like look for next zone, for next zone, for next zone. Maybe, Rich, it's time for us to switch bias and say, we are going short. Where can we sell it? No. <laughs> okay. So all this bent up for nothing. <laughs> No, I did. Um, yeah. yeah, just trade price action. Just trade what you see and mm -hmm. put your stop loss in a place where you're wrong. That's that's yeah. it. And, then, and you don't marry your bias. If the market says, hey, here's mm -hmm. a good place to sell from, just sell. Put your yeah. stop in a place where you're wrong. And if the market says, here's a good place to buy, just buy. And then, you know, go and cry on a pillow if you're wrong too many times. But if you're yeah. if you're right, the, I mean, this is why we backtest, because we should be able to draw up areas in the market and then create frameworks where we can mm -hmm. take trades and it's your back test and your data that tells you whether you're doing something right and then we do that in real time and we hope that we make a little bit more than we lose yeah um this week's been rough it's been a hard week but it's still been a profitable week because i've managed my risk but the saving grace this week has been has been the dax it has been just well no. uh, it's just been this it's just been trading the dax um yeah, I was did telling this. Stop in there. Did you hit stop or did you manage to get that long? Run? No, sorry. This was, um, if I click on this and just do that, that was the entry. Entry was on this candle close. Oh, I see. I see. Um, nice. But you know, I didn't, I didn't target this. I was, I was out, you know, I took just a small move on the upside on this. Mm -hmm. um, and then same again today, just a small move on the downside up here. You, you just look at higher time frames. We were streaming this morning, actually, and I had a, an entry there. And we were we were literally watching this miss by a point this morning, and this where that was my trade. And I was like, "Don't get emotional, just just trade limits." Like, and a market enters, I don't. I put orders in the market. Like, I'll put an order down here and go right. If price comes down here, then it's going to mm -hmm. automatically buy for me, and then mm -hmm. hopefully it'll back me up. You see my bias because like hopefully it'll go up, but the. Yeah. Anna's like sitting there waiting to market order. So sometimes this happens. Sometimes the market comes really close and misses my entry. And it just Did it miss your entry today then? Yeah, it missed it by a point. I would be pulling my hair out, Rich. Just delete that. I don't want to see it. It's terrible. It's horrible. It makes me emotional. <laughs> I'm going to cry. I was, uh, I was looking at this and I was like, look, I think the market is going to pull back into this price point. And if it's not this one, then it's going to be this one. Here okay. and we can see this is where the market went. So I went with this higher level. I was like, look, all this selling pressure came in here. Yeah. I want to have my entry just in front of it. And the market, I think my stop was up here and TP was a little lower. And the market just missed it. And I'm like, oh, okay. I was close, but no cigar yeah. on this account. Um, but yeah, this one, this one here was not. I was 
like this was a, a market enter on this candle close. But most of the time, I'm putting limit orders. Mm. And it's that's what I back tested. That's what made sense to me. Yeah, but, that's good. Yeah. What do we use in chat? Do we use market enters? So do we click buy when we want to buy and buy right now? Or do we wait for the market to come to us and then have an order waiting and use a limit order? I'm curious whether traders use limit orders or market. Limit's well, I better. Share, I can share, Rich, like, by, like why I trade mar market order because I have tried and I have actually not only tried, I have back tested a lot, also tried trading with the limit orders. Mm -hmm. And just simply because of the reason like this that you just showed happening, my emotions went over the roof. I can't handle the thing when it doesn't tap in and then it just goes. So <laughs> look at that. Basically, that would be me. I would be definitely punching <laughs> my stress bill off if I missed that by a bit. <laughs> um, so yeah, and my data just shows that it's always for me better to wait for confirmation because if you use limit order, you don't really wait for confirmation. It hits your zone. It hits your price and your end mm -hmm. or you you miss it right so for myself i just always wait for closure of the candle it just my comfort blanket you know it's like it just gives me that extra confidence that you know yeah. i am actually there's more let's say instead of 50 50 it's 70 30 <laughs> you know so, it just so what gets, do you think of this trade then if this trade like wait for this candle close here what do you think of this trade um do you like so, this? that is 15 minute chart but that's fine that's 15 minute chart okay so 15 minute chart so i could see that there's like a double bottom thing because you can see one leg bullish closure and then another bullish closure yeah so i would be in after this bullish closure and then mm -hmm. for my stops it would really depend but the thing is rich um gu unfortunately i'm bearish now on gu but where would you sell from well, that's the thing. Where would I sell from? I'm scared to share my screen just in case if it's just going to completely collapse the internet. Um, like, so, like I said, I was buying GU, uh, GBPUSD, as oh, it's not even like searching for it. <laughs> do, do, do. do you want to try and share screen in case it works? Or yeah, no? I will try. I will try and share the screen. Sorry, guys, if you will lose me, that is going to be terrible. <laughs> you'll just be stuck with me. Yeah, you'll be stuck with Rich. Um, okay. So this is this is going to be quite ugly screen I'm going to show you. Well, you already see it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe so... That's, maybe that's better. Yeah. So basically, this was the zone. If it's broken then um because that's where my stop was and i said if i am wrong then that means i'm wrong so now i need to focus where the where we can go so this is the next zone so basically there is like a little i don't know how to how to say my mom is calling wait um, it's okay you can take it you can take the call on stream that's fine yeah sure rich um <laughs> wait i'm gonna tell fabian I'm gonna say, Ted, Mama's on a buzzer, Minya, yes, <laughs> This is so good, I love it. Um, so, Mom, she completely switched me off. Like, I can't even think that. So, anyhow, back to charts. Focus, focus. Um, so, this was my zone where I would, I would say, like, yeah, I think I could buy from here. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, this was. This was the zone where I said, I'm going to be wrong if the price goes below this, because then we are, you know, we are moving lower. So yeah. now I see, unfortunately, look at that. There's zone in here, another in here. This is just like nonsense. So to see pound go back to 1.22 would be terrible. That's, but, yeah. Yeah, that's that's so much dollar strength. I can't imagine it, but I'll trade what I see. If the market says yeah. go short, there's so many prices that if price pulls back now, I would start shorting. Absolutely. I've got yeah. a zone to trade long from. If yeah. this fails, I would short from the similar zone. Interesting where you got your zone from because I can't see. So I see the zone in here. Mm -hmm. That's like I've done analysis before. So 
I would say price would go lower and then we could kind of pull back or we are going to pull back and then I could sell from two five, mm -hmm. something like that. Does, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the zone comes from here on the four hour. It's this wick. Oh. And then what I like is this area here as well. So like this, this to me is like an inverse head and shoulders, left shoulder, head, break of structure. And then I'd be looking for price to come and trade close to this line. And I'm anywhere sort of in this this wick. I like to take about 70% of this wick because this is where all the buyers got involved. And if we took this yeah. zone back, we could say that this is where the buyers were once, mm -hmm. this is where the buyers were twice, and this is the zone that I would like to see buyers again. So when I move to yep. the right, it would make sense that the market could come close to this black line here and we can yeah. see the market has come close and then that's what gave me this and I call this a bullish candle even though it's ever so slightly bearish I still call that a bullish pin bar because the wick to the okay. bottom is much much lower than the wick at the, sorry much much higher much than the wick larger. At the top. yeah yeah um but if the market wants to go down then just go oh. down <laughs> look at that Raphael says Hopefully, I'm not liquidity. <laughs> oh, I think we all have been liquidity at some point, huh? <laughs> so, yeah. But hopefully, it's not the same. No, um, you know what makes me think now? So how you show your zones, right, and how mm -hmm. I do my zones, I think it's completely different. That's why we have different levels in there. So we have, you know, my zone is a little different than yours. Um, but that's absolutely fine. Um, and this is my age, Rich. I can proudly talk about my age because my age comes from the way I see my zones. Um, and yeah, at the moment, GU is not looking good. It's not looking good for buys. Um, could this be last shot for the buyers to say, you know, this is it. So we either go bullish from here or this is it. We are switching our bias to bearish because looking at the chart, I say I need to be bearish now because mm -hmm. two five, the round number, you know, the psychological level, it's been broken yeah. and it goes. And, and you know what? Sometimes it can be broken as like liquidity, as like a sweep or just like a little fake out. We are 30 bits lower now. <laughs> so I don't think it's a fake out. No. <laughs> we are no. going down. So we just need to, we need to accept what it is and, um, so yeah, I think um, today's Friday. I'm really looking forward to see how the weekly will close. Um, and then for the next week, I will decide what's going to happen if I'm going to be trying to buy it and see the strength in, in pound or I'm going to switch. Yeah, exactly my thoughts, Rich. That arrow mm -hmm. is Anna's magic arrow. <laughs> that is my <laughs> magic arrow. <laughs> So yeah, that's that that would be something that I would do. Um and again, this is like that that emotional control. We need to have that emotional capacity to control us and to take these decisions of I either we are going to buy or we're going to sell based on our analysis. And then we can say, you know, this is confirmation for me to buy, this is confirmation for me to sell. So yeah, I think next week is gonna be really interesting week and i hope it's going to be better for me because i'm going to be back home um back to my routine um and yeah you know what rich i think i'm gonna share this um like being here away from my like a normal routine what i have realized about myself thanks for giving a <laughs> close up <laughs> what it's I okay have realized... oh, nice. um cool <laughs> you're back you're back. I'm back. No, I feel like you're about to share a really important point. So it's like, okay, let's pay attention here. Anna's about to drop a golden nugget. What have you got for us, Anna? <laughs> um, so basically what I said to myself is that being a good trader has to do something with having a good processes. And yeah. those processes comes when you are in environment when where there's no stress, you know, like because now I'm not sleeping in my beds. I'm not seeing my kids. I I had so many appointments here in Latvia. It's just like, you know, it makes me sick. So just like being outside of my routine and like traveling and all that, I do believe 
it's it's a no go for me. So when I journaled, I definitely said that to have those really good strong processes that you do every day, like to have that trading routine every mm -hmm. day is definitely something that helps me to be a better trader. And next time when I travel, and next time definitely I'm I'm going to try and do like a little test stretch. So next time I'm traveling, I'm not going to be doing anything with the charts. So maybe I could have a look at it, but I'm not going to execute any trades. Just like, just want to see how it goes. Because you know what? Last time when I was in Latvia for like winter in January, it was a terrible month as well. Like it was not month. The month of January ended up in profit. But that week when I was away, it was bad week. <laughs> so I need to go back in my journal and like see actually what, what happened. But it was no good. Hmm. So, yeah. Because in an ideal world, there should be no emotions in trading, but we're very emotional beings. Like in an ideal world, we just look at this, go to the daily, go, I've got a zone here. My zone is based on my back testing, where right. I mark up all these, these lovely areas where you see these big wicks, and I just put yeah. zones on them, and I just look for buying interest in these zones. This is heavily back tested. There's nothing that's emotional about this. I have a zone. I wait for a smaller time frame to show me that I want to be a buyer in this zone. My stop mm -hmm. is below the zone where I'm wrong. I'm just trading technically. And okay. if this trade hits my stop loss, do I care? No. Like in an ideal world, I don't care because this one trade doesn't break my career as a trader. This one loss isn't going to wipe out my entire year. It's just one loss. Like sure, yeah. we'd all like to see every single winning trade go up. Even if you have a 73% win rate, you don't know when the losers are going to come. So you mm -hmm. can't risk more on certain trades because you don't know what the outcome is going to be. I really like this setup, and this setup is now losing. So if I risk $1,000 on it, and I normally risk 200 for example, I'm going to lose like five trades in one go yeah. just because I thought this was better than the other trade. Yeah. And one thing I can tell you, when I've gone through my data and recorded which trades are better, well, like which ones I like the most, there's mm. been no pattern between – me calling the better ones in fact the ones i didn't like the most were the ones that performed the best mm. and like but in the real world what happens oh no price is going down maybe i should get out of this maybe i should add a bit more maybe i should put my stop loss up here should i put my stop loss down here we have all these decisions and we get emotional yeah. and when you talk about now you're not eating correctly now you're not sleeping mm -hmm. correctly, now you're not in the same household mm. you're not performing at your best trading is a performance related yep. sport. Yep. I mean, it, you, you get paid on your merits and when anna talks about routine this is why every day we share our asr this way mm -hmm. every day we share our analysis this way every day we do challenges to hold each other accountable to make sure that we have a routine and that we're performing because if you if you're just on your own you're just who's to hold you accountable mm -hmm. to it Who's to stop me just going, oh, do you know what? I'm just going to buy again here and then buy again here. Next thing I know, I've lost 10% of my account. Yeah. And that's not good. And then I go into the weekend and I need a, a bigger pillow to cry in. So I think it's good to have people that you work closer with and make sure that you're still doing the right thing. And even if this loses, this is just a good trade to me. Now, if I lose 20 trades in a row, I get to say, Anna, can you help me out here? My zones aren't good. I'm looking at the wrong things. Can we just spend five minutes and look at the charts and just uh -huh. give you some ideas? And that's the that's but it shouldn't be made from one trade. No. If you lose one trade, it means nothing. Yeah. Mm. That's my rant. I love that. I love when we go on rants. Like I think the rants are like raw because that's your like emotion you're sharing, you know. Mm. <laughs> I think that's always really good to go on a little rant. Anthony says, where did you got the piano? <laughs> that is so funny. It's fake, guys, okay? It's fake. It's not real piano. I can't play it. It's, it's the but you are a piano teacher, though, right? Like, I you am. Know... Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't, I, I don't think many does know. Um, but, yeah, I, I am actually a piano teacher. So I play piano. Used to play piano for a living, I, I guess I can say that. Or maybe not play piano, but teach piano for a living. Um and then I decided to go trading. <laughs> so trading was the way. Um, <clears throat> Leon is asking. Oh, I love these questions. Where in the UK are you both from? Well, Rich, should you start? Where are you yeah, from? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm over on the east side. 
which is um, Suffolk. So it's like this, if you look at like England, you've got this bit right on the side and it's in that curve. Um, so about probably about 100 miles from London, like mm. above London, but to the east as well. Mm. Nice. Well, I'm originally from Latvia. Um, it's um, a little country, three Baltic countries. We have Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. But I have been in Scotland, living in Scotland for 12 years now. And I'm just like um, 13 minutes from Glasgow. So that's where that's where I am about. Um, and I love it in there. And I, and I miss my home. Like I call it home. I have like two homes. One is here, but another one is there. <laughs> and I just miss it. Uh, but yeah, that's where we are in UK. And you know what, Rich? We should do a meetup one day, right? We should meet the traders because I think UK is, we can decide where we can go. London is like a very central area. Many, many traders could maybe come to London. Um, but yeah, definitely that would be something in, in plan. I would love that. <clears throat> Kata says, hi guys, a really good conversation. Like always, do these more often. Um, and I have DM'd you. Okay, I will check. I guess that's Discord. I will check Discord. Thanks um what we have here Budget rules flexible expectations the sentence from trading in the zone oh trading in the zone we did that book last year rich didn't we mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that's a really good book even though i've yeah. read it before i got so much from that the second time as well and again like not working through a book on your own sharing your notes having someone else to look at yeah. your notes your feedback on your notes there's so much to be said for like working as a part of the team and just yeah, not not like oh, where are you buying, where are you selling? Because that's unique to you as a trader. Like I'm never going to see the charts the way Anna does, and she will never be crazy enough to see them how I see them. But <laughs> craziness. But everything else outside of that is all pretty much the same. So like 95 percent of trading is all the same processes, mm -hmm. very similar risk management, learning about prop firms, learning about brokers, um, learning about how to you know, scale in, scale out, all the technicals, but then yeah. how you read price is just uniquely down to you. Yep. Edge, right? That's that's yeah. edge. Um, Anna, do you have Discord? Guys, I don't have like Discord's server, but I am on the Discords and some people are connected with me because I used to be in the Fiverr's community Discord. So that's why um some people are in have slipped into my DMs and they can actually reach out to me because I have replied them in the past. So some of them have that, should I call it <laughs> privilege? <laughs> <laughs> some are more privileged. <laughs> um, but no, I don't have like Discord community. Uh, but we did on last stream, we, me and Rich, we did say that there's something cooking. We are working on something. Um, so yeah we're we're not saying anything more right we're just like no you do have a you do have telegram um yeah i do yeah telegram is the place basically where it's only where i can share so i don't have a space where we can like talk it's where you know where the the community is like open because the telegram is only like me sharing my um sharing my processes you know i'm like the gooder trader just me sharing <laughs> that's terrible <laughs> Uh, but yeah, but there's definitely something in works. Um, okay, look at that. I have passed the five percenters high stakes 100k challenge today. Congratulations. Congratulations. We nice. love seeing traders win. That's awesome. Well, let me ask, let me ask. We've got nearly 30 people in here. What is it you would want to see? Um, are, you, are you just curious about trading? Are you an absolute guru about trading? Are you selling signals to thousands of people? Are you learning about trading? What is it that you would value the most? We come on, we have these chats, and we, we try and keep them a little bit lighthearted. We, we keep them trading related. But at its core, Anna has been trading on and off for 10 or 12 years. You've been a full-time yeah. trader for, what, five years now? Yeah. You were you – were, you had – you know, you – I'm not even going to go into the numbers, but let's just say Anna has in, Anna has achieved incredible things when it comes to trading. In fact, from a, I don't want to say percentage, but I can go further than that. Anna is an incredible trader. I'm just going to leave it there. So you have the opportunity to lean into that experience. What is it that you want? Because we come on, we have a chat. Why? Because we know our trading edge. 
we can yeah. chill out. We can put our trades on like this and go, well, if it's stop loss, it's stop loss. On to the next. We've yeah. done a lot of that work. And it is it's, it is a lot of work to get to that point. But what is it that you you would value? Where, is, where you are in your journey that you want us to kind of give you some insights in? Or is there is something that you want to share with us? Because we're still learning about stuff, right? Mm -hmm. There's still sure. things that we're learning about. Yeah. I think so, that's uh, like the power of community, isn't it? Like where you just, um, where you can learn. I don't know mm -hmm. what I can learn from Rich though. What can I learn from you, Rich? <laughs> I'm I'll tell, I'll tell you what you can learn, Anna. Let's, uh, let's get serious here for a second, shall we? Okay. You can learn how to plank. That's what you can learn. No, you I've seen, shouldn't. Yeah, I've seen you planking and your arms are like this. They're shaking around. No. No, don't you dare. <laughs> okay, so let me just clear this out. So me and Rich, we are doing a plank challenge where every day we add on five seconds. And the rule is we need to film ourselves while we are doing it because it has to be times. There's no cheating. Mm -hmm. We're doing it properly. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and yeah, and Rich is losing terribly to me because he's literally breathing like an old man <laughs> for his dear life. Um, yesterday was one minute. We hit the one minute mark now. So we are holding the plank for one minute. I think that's incredible. Um, I don't know. For sure, maybe I could um, I could learn that from Rich. I don't know. How to breathe. There's, like there's you who doesn't put shoes on, whose socks are slipping all over the floor everywhere. <laughs> you're you're like, like when a dog's trying to run really quick and they're not yeah, getting any traction. I was struggling for that one. I was really, really struggling. Um, but learn how to get your steps in. I don't know. Yeah, Anna's the person you want to learn how to get your steps in from. Definitely don't <laughs> don't ask me. When Guys, honestly, I feel so proud. In month of April, every day I have done more than ten k steps. I think that's incredible. I think that's an awesome achievement. I know there are people who do way more. But like for myself, looking like how my routine is and how much time I have, like I have done 10k steps every single day, no matter what. Like I went to the like airport. I actually went to the wrong gate on purpose so I could walk more <laughs> and get my steps in, you know? So no, <laughs> that's I think dedication. Um, yeah, that's a dedication for sure. But I think um, no, like power of community, like just because I have Rich there is my, you know, like my accountability buddy where i can just tell him how it is it just helps so much like so so much and just to have those little challenges they're actually not that little i mean plank is hard okay it is definitely not easy but we are doing it and by the way guys we have a bet on potentially some of us will be will be paying someone a big fat coffee voucher I think we should just pay for each other that money. I, I think you will pay for me. <laughs> I think you will lose. <laughs> so in this in this playing challenge, every day that goes by, we add another pound to mm -hmm. the coffee voucher. Yep. If nobody gives up this year, Anna will be planking every single day for 27 minutes straight. That's a 270 pound coffee voucher if That's you do not quit. Crazy. So we're on, are we on what, day 11 today? Um, yeah, I think today is day 11 um, because we keep it mm. like, a, me and Rich, we do have Discord. Um, so we keep it in um, like separate server. server which is and you should quit. Like this is, this is your opportunity where it will only cost you 11 pound voucher. You should quit right now. <clears throat> like, this is your opportunity. This is me doing you as a solid, as your accountability buddy to say, mm. I'm looking out for you. You should no. You should genuinely step aside on this one. No, not a chance. So we are going to be on day 12 today. And yesterday I didn't even shake. Like I had full ab control because I had shoes on. So I didn't slide or anything like that. Yeah. It was just awesome. You guys, I feel so, so much power like in my body. I feel I can just easily beat rich like with no bother. But I do know once we hit like four minutes, it's going to be a struggle for me for sure. There's so. been days where like 40 seconds has felt like 10 minutes. <laughs> it, it, it's not easy. I don't know if anyone in, in, in here has done like a plank challenge where you mm. do like a press up position and you just have to hold it. Yeah. Um, because you don't warm up when you do it. So next thing you know, you get your phone and you start recording and then you just go, oh, this is easy. And then you forget to breathe for 
five seconds or 10 seconds, and then <laughs> everything goes out. And Anna's always like, Rich, why are you still talking? Stop talking. You should be focusing on your breathing. Yeah, on your breathing. Yeah. Oh, but no. it's those little challenges. Plank- no, what did you say? It was Plank Diaries because he's doing the plank, and he's like, well, today went great. You know, Mark, it has been rubbish, so I'm just going <laughs> to yeah. use this time. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? Who on earth does the plank? And... Like, just tells how they are feeling. Like, you just focus, okay? You try and control your body. And that's what you do, but not... Maybe that's where I'm going wrong. I I review my day whilst I'm doing a plank. And I'll be like, Mm -hmm. yeah, took a stop loss today, but traded well, so I'm happy with that. And the next thing I know, my arms are shaking around like this and my voice is going all (laughs) way. Oh, my goodness. I love these little challenges. I think we should also, like, do more like a challenge. Maybe, like... um, what I'm doing now is like daily ASR, which I do anyways, then daily mm-hmm. forecasts. Maybe there could be like a break down your best trade of the day. And if you don't take the trade, then maybe try and back test and just, just find the setup. I think, I don't know. I think doing something little challenges that really helps you to be better because, you know, plank is still helpful. It just strengthens my muscles. Also adapt emotional strength as well because you're like i need to keep going i need to keep going i think that's great like to have these little challenges and um and trying for steps i'm not gonna say how many step stretch is doing okay um i'm gonna be kind to him today because <laughs> i know he's gonna go for something else if i say anything at all so he, he, can, <laughs> he can hit me back so i'm not saying anything at all I don't understand. Anna, what, what, what are you talking about i mean you can elaborate a little bit more if yeah, you want yeah. My lips are okay. sealed. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. Well, well, that trade is not looking too good, Rich. Are you still yeah. okay? <laughs> still fine. Yeah, still fine. Yeah. It's, I managed my risk. It was it was one hour. Um, and if it hit stop, I think my stop is a little tighter. I think it's a little bit round about there. So probably mm-hmm. probably gonna get stopped out on this one. And I'm more impressed with how much strength is in the dollar today, mm. this week. It's like wow. 124.50 good on you like I'm, I'm surprised by this yeah i placed my best analysis i was patient i waited for it i did everything that i could have done and i can't control what the market does and this is the thing with profitable traders like it doesn't mean to say you win every trade i've done a video about this and i was talking about expectations i thought a profitable trader just wins all the time i thought that's the whole point of being profitable you're yeah. working towards getting profitable when you when you know what to do in the market Why would you lose? Because you know. So therefore, you should win every trade. And that's the problem. I was trying to win every single trade. And so what I learned was a profitable trader might win two and then lose one. Mm -hmm. They might win four and then lose three. That's my understanding of a profitable trader. I win a little bit more than I lose. And we Mm -hmm. can then go, you know, negative risk to reward or positive risk to reward. But Mm -hmm. as long as you're making a little bit more than you're losing over 100 trades, that's my understanding of a profitable trader. And I can take five losing trades in a row. Does it mean I'm not profitable? No. Mm. It just means I'm going through a drawdown. And drawdowns are natural as well with trading. So that's that's the thing I didn't understand. I wish someone just explained to me. Right in the early days, they're like, hey, Rich, I'm a profitable trader, and I still take losing trades. I'd be like, what? Tell me more. Mm-hmm. Because it, I thought they're just always, always going to win. And yeah. then you just you pass prop challenges with no problems. You have a personal account, and it just goes in a straight line upwards. Why wouldn't you risk 10% of trade? Because mm-hmm. you're a profitable trader. You know which trades are going to win. Mm-hmm. And it's that Mark Douglas, right? You have no idea what's going to happen. You yeah. have a random distribution between wins and losses. You have yeah. no idea if this is going to be the winning trade or if this is going to be the losing trade. Yeah. That's why we manage risk. And that's what the realistic expectation should be, right? We should have the realistic expectation of trading. And mm-hmm. if you see someone saying that they are only winning or that they never go on a drawdown, like run, run away. <laughs> Don't listen to them. Um and well, I don't know, maybe there is someone, but honestly, like my my people in my trading circle, like they all go through the drawdowns. But it's like Rich says, you lose three, you win five. As long as you lose 
like as long as you lose less or win a little bit more, you know, that's that's when it, that's what it is. Anna, I said I win four and then lose three. You're like, I win five, I lose three. There's a little flex there. You're like, okay. you just have to win one more. Don't you? Have we got anyone in chat who just wins all the time? Yeah. I'd love to hear it. If you genuinely win all the time, but not not like they have won 10 trades in a row. Cool. Congratulations. That's good. Mm -hmm. But if you've like over a hundred trades over two months, three months, four months, mm -hmm. do you do you win all the time? I've never met a trader that wins all the time mm -hmm. that wasn't selling me something. That's the difference. I've mm. met traders that said they won all the time, but they also wanted my money. How does that work? Because if you win all the time, Anna, if you win all the time, why do you keep trying to get me to buy you coffee vouchers? It doesn't make sense. So in my mind, people who say they win all the time, I'd run. Like Anna said, I would run from them. Yeah. Genuinely, I would run from them. They're not going to help you get and be a better trader. They're going to charge you a bunch of money mm -hmm. and then they're going to just spend that money on promoting the idea that they're highly profitable. Good yeah. traders lose and they lose well. And you can watch this live on this stream. When this hits stop loss, I'm going to lose well because I'm if, a good trader. If this hits stop loss, not win. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I was managing my expectations there, but <laughs> if this hits stop loss, um, but yeah, yeah, it's just that's that's kind oh. of my thing. Look at that. Raphael said that he just hit the uh, lost on G Long. Well, Rich has just a bit wider stop loss, but it is what it is. We have, hey, Anna, just watched one of your videos about 5%ers programs. Well, thank you for watching my old videos. I really appreciate it. Hopefully, it was useful. Um, although, just want to guys say my older videos, they are not up to date because the fivers have changed some rules. So, just like always check the the time of the video if it's posted mm -hmm. like most likely last year um so da, da, da. Mm, first takes off is the worst entry fee but is that program really risky let's have a look but is that program really risky i don't feel like putting more money than 39 dollars in at the moment so take a moment and think about what you can afford if, yeah. if you have three thousand dollars in the bank can you afford to lose 39 dollars and then if you lost a whole account, you're only losing 1% of what you have. This is what I think about when I'm buying accounts with prop firms. Not, not just 5 percenters, but any prop firm. I'm going to go and think about how long they've been, been, been in business, and then I'm going to work out, can I afford to buy an account? If I have $1,000 and I buy a $500 account, I'm going to be stressing every time I lose a trade on that account. Because if I lose that account, I've lost 50% of my money. That's yeah. not good risk management to me. So I would I would be advised to, uh, or I myself personally, I would only buy an account that if I lost it, I it's not going to affect my life, if that makes sense. And mm -hmm. most people cannot afford to keep buying five hundred dollar accounts and losing them. Yet mm -hmm. traders still buy accounts that are bigger. You know why? Because the greed. We think about how much we can make. Yeah. So it's really important to I had a I had a little um 5k account and I got it funded. I got six payouts on it, made about six hundred pounds out of it, and the account cost me thirty pounds to buy. And yeah. I proved my concept and now I trade with bigger accounts because I proved it with only thirty pounds risk to me. Mm -hmm. So if I would have gone and bought a five hundred pound account. I couldn't have traded it as well as I did the little account because the psychology again. Buddy, <laughs> he's the typical guru. <laughs> <laughs> I don't win 100% of the time. <laughs> but well, I... your money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Um, so there's a new trader in here. I'm new to trading. We'll be trading for past three weeks and learning. So three weeks in and you're thinking to get into prop firm? Be very careful because prop farms can get a little addicted because you see the bigger picture there. You see, like Courage said, you see how much money you can make. But yeah, just go slow. Okay. I, I will say my favorite thing risk with what you can afford to lose. If you mm -hmm. have $39 in your bank account and it's not going to be pain in you, like it's not going to be pain for you to lose them. It's not for your food, for your rent or whatever, then use that money and buy account and you can like train it or I don't know, like 
test your strategy and that will be a little bit more attachment to it. It's not going to be just like a demo account because you know that you have put some money into it. But just like be really, really, really careful. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I think that's a good point. That's that's what I'm kind of hoping. I'm just reading this now. Um, if I can buy the lowest entry, then make a couple of hundred profit, then maybe I could reinvest and buy a boot camp. Yeah. This, so this is the cool thing about trading. If you're good, your track record should support that. And then over time, yeah. that money should slowly build and then you can reinvest it into slightly bigger accounts. And then you get to a point where you're buying the big accounts uh -huh. and you can afford to lose them, but you have the confidence that you know why you're buying the account. Um, and I think we, we spoke about this when uh, like a 2000% return on an account. These, these accounts can be an incredible good return. Mm -hmm. if you know what you're doing but the failure rate is still over what 90 percent yeah, I, would yeah. Say more. <laughs> I, th I think there was i think it was even a um it was said that i think less than two percent of traders make their first payout um that was yeah. said in the past i think yeah. by a company that whether it's you believe that or not, <laughs> yeah, whether you believe it or not but less than two percent and you've got to ask yourself yeah. don't let these stats scare you but ask yourself, why are less than 2% getting paid? If that's true, why is less than 2% getting paid? And what can you do to put mm. yourself in the minority? Because Anna's got loads of advice on what she does that puts her in that category. And then I've got the things that I do that puts me in that category. The people that are in those categories, they're not in there by mistake. They're in there because they show up and they yeah. put in a little bit of work each day. And the work they do is, is clever, it's well measured, it's well executed, yeah. and it helps them grow. And they do this over time. No great oak tree grows to the size it is in just three months. Mm. First, it has to germinate, then grow into a shrub. I know nothing about gardening, but then it grows into something a bit bigger. And why would it be any different in trading? It's the same in the gym. It's the same in friendships. It's the same in mm -hmm. trust relationships, anything that we do in life takes time to build. Why would it be any different in trading? I don't think it could ever be any different. Yeah. So risk what you can afford to lose. Oh, I love that. I love that risk what you can afford to lose. Um, we have celebrity joining us here. Yanis hey. is here. Hello. Good evening. <laughs> trader from Bali, living that trader's lifestyle. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, good to have you here, Yanis. I hope you're doing good. Um, you think failure rate is because people don't test um oh sorry <laughs> and learn things um okay sometimes i like a little conspiracy <laughs> i'm not gonna go here too deep but i think yeah that could be one thing people don't test properly and then they get into prop trading or real accounts live trading um but honestly i think what drives the failure is greed is the gambling, is that need to, Rich, am I going too deep here? <laughs> you I don't think so. Me. No, but, I don't think so. Um, it's just like, I think why people fail the prop firms is because, yeah, they come in, they don't have enough data, they haven't back tested, they haven't tested it. But I think it's also because the, the realistic expectation is just not there like their mm -hmm. expectation is just way too high and they keep on failing um and unfortunately there are too many people out in this industry but i do believe hey hey first stop we have a stop loss congratulations <laughs> we have a stop loss um oh it is what it is i think we are moving lower unfortunately gu is just not strong at all Today is not that day for, thank God, it's Friday. Today is like, God, why is it Friday? <laughs> you know? Um, but anyhow, going back to like that failure rate, yeah, there, there can be many, many reasons why traders fail. But with the prop farms, I do believe mostly it's because of the greed. We see that there's, mm -hmm. you know, you pay 500, 400 K pound, like 100 K account. And then you think you're going to make so much money, you're going to do all these things. So uh, it's that realistic expectation, unfortunately. So I think that's three why reason. Three reasons why I lost funding accounts in the past. Number mm -hmm. one, I risk too much. 
Number mm -hmm. two, I didn't know what I was doing with my strategy because I didn't understand my rules. And number mm -hmm. three, when I did know my rules, I didn't execute the trade as I should. So an example could be, I'm just going to move my stop loss lower. Now I'm taking too much risk. An example could be, I've got a limit order here and the market doesn't hit it. So I FOMO in at worst price up here. So three mm -hmm. things for me personally, I used to risk too much. I used to risk 2% a trade. That only gave me five trades until I lost my account. And I didn't know if my strategy was profitable because I didn't know how to back test. And then when I finally understood my strategy, I used to put my limit orders like here and then the market would miss and then I would just enter randomly here. And then I would end up closing about here and not following my trading plan. So right now, what do I have? I have rules. I have a trading plan, I have risk management, mm -hmm. and I only buy accounts that if I lose it, I don't care. It gives me data. This trade yeah. here that lost did whatever it did, something like this, right? This trade here that hit stop loss, what does this tell me? That's a trade I'm going to go and put into my data, and it's going to sit there with hundreds of other trades, and it's going to tell me whether I'm still profitable. Yeah. I need to take so many of these losing trades before my strategy becomes unprofitable. This mm -hmm. is just one trade. And if it wicks me out just like this, then that's data that I'll use again. I'll journal around that and I'll find how many trades wick me out and then go to TP. So those were the three reasons that I used to used to lose stop uh, used to use. And help me, I can't get my words out here. You help yourself, French. <laughs> you know, like I'm tired. I'm on a two-hour sleep, so you help yourself, pal. <laughs> Those were the three biggest reasons why I used to lose prop firm accounts. Those were my biggest reasons. I can't yeah. speak for everyone else, but I should imagine that mm. it's very generic. That greed yeah. of wanting to earn money and earn it fast, I'm sure it's the same in other people. Ashby saying, could you explain some basic rules in prop firms? I would... Have a look at a prop firm and then bring up all their terms and conditions, go through because mm. each company is a little bit different. Some yep. companies offer different models. So just, just kind of do your own research. And if you're not sure, then then obviously yep. just steer away. But I know there's there's a lot of bad actors and there are still some some better ones. So you have to kind of do your own research on that. It probably would be unfair for us to say what the rules are and then it's different yep. for different companies. Yeah. And also guys for for you i think the best place to ask the questions is just reach out to support and just like go straight to them and just ask what it is that you want to know mm -hmm. um because it's good to like ask for my opinion if you like would ask me hey if the fibers are good company i would say yes they are good but go and do your research like go and speak to other people or speak to the support that's that's the best way and um, the only thing that i do want to say about the prop firms if you do see them doing the discounts all the time then just be mindful i'm gonna put it out there if you see the prop firm offering 50 off 25 off whatever it is just every week discount codes and all that kind of stuff run <laughs> that's me this is my little tip for you guys so wait anna this is a good one what would you do there Wait, wait. Uh, what would you tell to yourself in time when you're uh, you starting in trading? So, like, if I could go, like, give myself advice when I just started to trade, um, don't pay five thousand dollars for a course. Oh, <laughs> you didn't. You didn't. I did. I did the worst. Um, I think I have said it publicly, yeah, but the most expensive course, unfortunately, I did buy and they were one of those Miami influencers. Unfortunately, I was that stupid. I'm really sorry that shit. <laughs> That's how it was. Um, I mean, guys, it was years ago. It was really, really years ago. Um, I wish I never did that, but I did. And honestly, it was such a waste. I didn't gain anything, literally anything from there mm -hmm. and do you think the guys are around now no they were gone within like a year oh, no. um so honestly I, i'll tell you this so i have bought courses many many courses and uh, only a couple of traders one is trading fanatic idiot and then another is the vet um 
those are the only two traders that are still actually here and they are still teaching, they are still trading and they are still growing themselves and they are very much transparent traders. Other courses I have bought, I'm not going to name because, you know, you don't no. need to. <laughs> or like communities that, and when I say community, it's like paid court, not the court, but like um, a signals and like weekly call kind of thing where you can't even speak out. Um, wait, wait, you many. said what you wouldn't do. You said I wouldn't buy a $5,000 course. Uh -huh. What would you do? What, so would, what, what one would, thing do, would you do? Well, yeah, what I would do is I would definitely, I think, you know what I say to people, go to baby pips. That's like your basic. So learn everything in there so you know your basics. And then what you do, you get dirty in the market. <laughs> you open them <laughs> account. You do back testing you grow your processes you learn that trading is not an easy way trading is very much process driven job i would say okay mm -hmm. so you need to have like myself i have the routine and if i'm out of the routine i'm a rubbish trader and i know that so i shouldn't be trading when i'm out of my routine so what i would do baby pips go get yourself demo account start the spreadsheet start back to things simple setups Mm -hmm. go on a like higher time frame first because the lower time frame you go the harder it is keep it yeah. stupid simple do like three confirmations candle closure pattern uh, maybe something to the left the price has been there a couple of times something like that like very simple and start to just back this and trade demo and um i would say it has to be done six months at least honestly like i see these very, wait, very wait. do you mean six months of data on the chart or you need to no, spend six actually doing six months of trading i honestly rich it sometimes bothers me when someone new in the trading they come to me i've been trading for two months and i already bought like whatever prop firm or i have deposited thousand whatever in my broker mm -hmm. and i was like what on earth are you doing like what are you doing do you have enough data to show you that you can actually do that like can you actually grow emotional capacity to control your emotions, your risk and everything within that short amount of the time? I think traders are like doctors. We need a long time to get better because you know what? Like I feel like I always have felt embarrassed, Rich, because it took me five years to actually get to that profitability. Okay. Mm -hmm. It took me lots of like, failure and lots of learning and lots of like ups and downs right and I always felt like oh it's so embarrassing because I see there's like traders who are saying they're trading for like six months and they're already like making six figures how is that even possible and I'm like thinking am I stupid or something why it took me longer and all that but then we each go through you know the the learning stage is like different but I don't think that in three months you can actually you have that emotional capacity yeah you might know all the patterns and candles and charts and all that but emotional capacity to actually trade mm -hmm. to manage risk to be portfolio manager i don't know i honestly don't know um okay i've got a question for you then so okay. it took me two years to stop losing money not not to make money two years but just to stop yeah. losing if a normal person like not like like super clever, just a normal person came up to you right now and said, spill mm. the beans. I'm a really hard worker. How long, how short do you think it would take for that person to stop losing money and maybe mm. start making a little bit? How many yeah. days, weeks, months, or how many years? Under under like really good instruction. And they're a good student, like they're gonna work. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a tough question because like we are all different you know like for me it took a long time but I honestly I really struggle with that kind of like to believe someone who's in trading for three months and they are saying they already like they know it all I mean like how how because there's so much to learn about like how do you know it all um so I don't know I think we just need to take the time and you know how you gain experience is through time you know yeah. if you start something new you know, you start to learn piano. Will you be able to learn piano in one week? I don't think so, because there are so many things to learn about. The same thing with trading. So it's like, just take it slow, step by step, slowly learn and give yourself time. Like, yeah. and don't think, you know, six months is enough. So yeah, I always say, 
um, the more experience you have, the better it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And on YouTube, there's so many influencers selling the idea that trading is easy peasy. Then why do they need your money? If trading for them is so, so easy, why do uh, they need your money? And, and just to try and sell you signals and, and, and lie to you about how, oh, it's because, like, you know, I make so much money, I want to help other people make the yeah. same money. It's because trading is not easy. Trading is a skill. Yeah. It is a craft. It is a profession. It is a career. And yeah. it takes time to learn it. It takes time to refine it. It takes time to master it. I have not mastered my trading. I am yeah. certainly better than I was in the past, but I still work on it every day. I still read psychology books. I mm -hmm. still work on myself. I still seek out accountability. I still yeah. learn new risk models. I'm still back testing random stuff in the market to see if there's things I notice that I'm not using at the moment. So yeah. trading is, is just about constantly putting in a little bit of work and trying to get better yeah. than you were yesterday. So if they say it's easy, they've probably got an agenda. Mm. You've got two profitable traders right here, over 10 years of experience, full time. And both of us are saying it took a bit of work to get there. Yeah. That's a bit. A bit, <laughs> <laughs> a bit of work. Um, yeah. But you know what? Like speaking about also, like I have a mentor and I don't mind paying her my money like when it comes to like mentoring me and she's a trader she's been trading for a long time like i don't mind paying money to the people who are actually like helping me okay so i just want to say it just finding the right ones is really hard or like look at that hannah's here <laughs> she completely threw me off <laughs> and this time she actually didn't come as a hidden person she comes <laughs> from <laughs> she comes from real profile um so yeah, thanks Hannah for being here. Um, yeah, I think if you, you know, like I'm in Hannah's Life Club, you know, and that's a paid community as well. And I don't mind paying that money, whatever amount, if I can get, you know, something out of it that helps me to be a better trader. But if you are getting a course like I did years ago, paid $5,000, and because the traders were showing all that luxury lifestyle, they will teach me in three weeks how to trade and all that kind of stuff. It's just stupid. I was stupid, you know. I'm clever now because I have that experience. But I would not, you know, I would not do it. Yeah, I agree. I think I only ever bought two courses. One I know is definitely not around, and I think the other one isn't as well. I stopped watching the content when that, you know, that person moved out of that space. So mm -hmm. I... I think most people that, that kind of do that stuff, it's a it's a temporary thing. So I'm I'm more interested in like long term, always mm -hmm. building longer term relationships, being in like a longer term vision. Um, even like recently, yeah. I was asked if I had three million pounds, would I would I just quit trading? Um, this was asked to me recently. Would you just quit with three million and go? I said no. I said, because I have a bigger vision in my life with trading. Trading is more than just clicking buy and sell, making just a mm -hmm. bit of money. Um, what am I going to do sitting on a beach with three million pounds? It's like, how lazy and how slow am I going to become mentally as well? Trading yeah. keeps me sharp, it keeps me humble. I mean, trading definitely keeps me humble. Look, you know, you go through <laughs> losses. Trading keeps me working on myself, and just yeah. I don't, I did trading in the beginning because I thought it's an easy way to earn money. Then I fell in love with the journey and I fell in love with the changes that I started to notice in myself. I started to become more patient, a little bit more disciplined. Mm -hmm. I, I had a little bit more um, awareness of myself. I work on myself so, so mm -hmm. much more. Uh, my money management yeah. has gone through the roof. There's so many things that trading does for me as a byproduct that I believe mm -hmm. genuinely makes me a better me. There's no amount of money that I would give that up for because yeah. – there's a bigger vision of why I do it. And and the bigger vision is is outside myself. I don't want traders to go through that misery mm. of spending years losing money. I can mm -hmm. tell you, I have been on my knees and cried at the amount of money I have lost in trading in that first two years when I took my biggest loss. Mm -hmm. I didn't manage my risk. I was emotionally compromised and I didn't have anyone to just say, here's a hand. Let me just let me just help you from this position. Yeah. Let me let me explain couple of basic things and then we can work through this together and and that's a huge huge vision in my life is i i want to be that um in a community which is why we spoke about doing something bigger than just ourselves um mm -hmm. 
Sorry, yeah. Ryan, I know we said we wouldn't we wouldn't go into it, but we love the dance. Look at that. It's so true. It's because that's the point, right? It's like we need the life gains as well. Um, um yeah, Barry said there, trouble is when you start you think everyone is this is the word I struggle to I always say kind of gen genuine. Is that the right way to say it, Rich? Yeah. Um, and believe that they are all making money until you get a few years in and then you realize it's too late. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, trading is fun, you guys. Sorry, I just want to pull for something. Funded and at 2% of losing the account. Ooh. Okay. Do you lose your skills if you lose that account? That's the first question I would ask myself. You got funded because you did right. something right. If you lose the account, that's information that you can look at and say, am yep. I doing something wrong? Was I too aggressive? Did I risk too much? Did I not trade my strategy? You're saying mm -hmm. that you don't feel confident in your strategy. What you've got is 2%. You're the boss of your trading. Anna says this all the time. Yay. You <laughs> decide how much risk you use on that account. If you've got 2% yeah. left, you could risk 0 0.01 and you could give yourself hundreds of lives and you could play around in that account to learn, to be mm -hmm. confident in your strategy, to build a small buffer, to start increasing your risk. You decide how you move forward with that account. You must accept mm -hmm. full ownership that you're in the position you are because of the decisions you make, which means moving forward you will be in the position you want to be because of the decisions you choose to make and stick to. So don't yep. lose the account without ever gaining insights and growing from it. Otherwise, it's a wasted lesson. Yeah, it, it is true. You know what? Also, I can share like a little story when I used to do, when I would be like so close of losing the account of the prop firm, I would be like, is it worth it for me to try and get it out back to the break even like mm -hmm. to spend all that time, say, for the copy trader or whatever, is it going to be worth it? Or I should just like go crazy bananas, risk 1%, take the next two setups, you know? Like there are so many options because that's like the, the truth is if that account was bought with the last money that you can afford to lose, obviously then you need to try to come up with the plan how you can recover. If you have use the money and it's not hurting you kind of thing, then you can go, like I said, go bananas, <laughs> risk more. This is terrible. I'm actually saying for people to risk more, Rich. <laughs> What's happening to me? Um, but the idea is just like, because the funded accounts, investment is 500 or whatever you have paid for it, right? Uh -huh. So it's like, it's not like you're gonna lose like your whole account. Like for my personal life funds, I would never give you advice to risk more or to go bananas or do something crazy. No, because we have the rules that we need to trade within when it comes to the prop farms, right? So it's just your decision to make and to see how how is it going to affect you. If you lose that account, what's going to happen next? What's going to be your next step? Mm -hmm. You're going to take another account, same mistakes, or you're going to learn from it. What you're going to do, you're going to try to recover. You're going to try to risk it for a biscuit. Like so many <laughs> options. So many options there um i actually love what jan said in there greed and not taking stop loss has been a killer for me in the past and to so many other traders trust mm -hmm. me when i say this um i mean even from my experience my worst mistake rich probably was the moving stop loss what yeah. you showed before like moving yeah. lower, lower lower that that was my worst worst enemy and i've journaled so much around it like i was even like putting the notes sticky notes i remember all over my laptop i was still trading with laptop at that time and i would be like i'm not gonna move my stop loss i'm not gonna move my stop loss i'm not gonna move my stop loss it's like almost like see the affirmation every morning i would start i'm a good mom I am a good trader. And I would be like, I yeah. am not going to move my stop loss. I am not going to. You had so many stop. sticky notes on your computer. You couldn't even see the place to trade. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe not that many, but you know, you got, you got the point. So basically like, yeah, yeah my, um, my little sticky notes were just, you know, reminding me like, you know, all that, but. I like this question that Hannah brings up. Do you believe mm. in work-life balance? I believe in it. 
I'm in ter I'm terribly, terribly bad at it. And I know our words, we have to be careful with what we say, but genuinely, mm -hmm. this is something that I really want to see an uptick in. I want to see improvement in work-life balance. I work too much. Anna knows this about me. I'm, yeah. I, I'm always kind of at the desk doing work-related stuff, and I would love to get that work-life balance right. Yeah. I'm working on getting it right, but it always seems it's elusive and I just can't quite catch it. But if you've got any thoughts on it, I'd love to hear it. Or uh, Anna, work-life <laughs> balance. What is the secret... The, the secret pill to work-life balance um i think you know one of my superpowers because you know i'm superhuman right one of my <laughs> superpowers has always been a time management i have always known how to manage my time really well because of like being mama for a trader then i used to work as well like having so many commitments but i was able to manage them really really nicely but then at some point you know, it got in my way. So I have definitely learned the lesson where now I will say that I will never choose my work over my family. So my family will go first, no matter what. And I just, I'm blessed that I can be in that space. You know, I can say, I'm going to drop whatever, and I'm going to focus on my family. I can do that. And I'm just in a really good position. And, you know, I can do that. But it's the time management that's what we need to we need to learn how to manage our time better um to gain that work and life balance like i am rich accountability buddy and i know that he's working really hard now and still like i love seeing him taking the mental breaks remember how i messaged you remember to take a break today yeah. rich you know just yeah. like reminding him uh but then i know he dug the hole for himself because he didn't do the work the time management was wrong. Basically, I'm just like, you know, slapping his face right now. It's his fault that he's in this call right now and he needs to work like 12 hour days. <laughs> you started so kindly. You were so I kind. Know. And then you're like, no, it's his fault. He done this to himself. Well, the, the thing is, like, I need to be open and honest. Like, I know Rich did wrong because he didn't manage his time well. So if you want to have a really good life and work balance, you just need to be really good at managing your time and prioritize. Like, where does your priorities come from? Um, and um, I actually was, um, I think it was, yeah, I said to Hannah that, you know, editing at the moment is not my priority. My priority is to get my family because my mom is over. I needed to go and do all the doctor appointments. And, and it's just like my health was my priority. And it's like how we prioritize things is going to really show that life work balance. Um, so yeah, time management, guys, basically. That's what I'm saying. And Rich is terrible at it. That's why he's struggling now. <laughs> but in the future, I know he's gonna learn the lesson. And yeah. I am, I honestly, I cannot wait for two weeks until you are done and you are more available. And then we can finally focus on our you know future plans for community and all that so yeah. i'm super 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 excited for you to be over it <laughs> i do have a book on audible that is about time management i'm and i haven't found the time to read it yet as well so i know that's bad i just want to quickly touch on this because i know this trade has got to go um how long does it take to pass the two-step programs i know you've got to shoot and you really wanted to get this advice this isn't advice it comes down to how aggressive you want to be. I was risking between 1% yeah. and between a half of a percent. And it took me four and a half months to pass my phase one and mm -hmm. my phase two. Now that information will not help you because yeah. you do not trade the same as me and we probably don't risk the same. But all I can do is just share my experience. So I was risking between half a percent and 1% and it took me four and a half months. I felt the market wasn't being particularly good in that time. So that's probably a slightly underperforming time. For me personally, I would really like to pass those phases in about three months, mm -hmm. but I've been doing it a little while. Anna, have you got any, any kind of thoughts I on think that? It really, I think it really depends. I have done, um, I have done basically I think remember like this year so i started prop challenge this year and i i was done what like within six weeks both phases i was done but then it has taken me six months last year six months to scale my account this i think that's your answer it really depends it depends yeah. on your circum circumstances it depends on your strategy market your 
like so many so many things it's like the, the it's just it's it's wild honestly it really depends so you can do it in a very short period of time and yes. in, in a very long it just really depends yeah. but, but um, even like that overconfidence if you go yeah. through a winning streak and then you you have recency bias where you up your risk and then you blow it all you're back to break even so we've got to manage our own emotions as well. Sometimes we can go through great winning streaks. What do you do in a winning streak? Do you scale up? Is that a part of your plan? Do you go greedy? Do you scale back? I actually reduce risk when I'm winning. It's not the right thing to do, but I reduce risk because I know I'm going to be likely to be overconfident. Nice. Yeah. Well, we have a new subscriber, Rich. <laughs> But this is my channel, guys. Just to shout out, Rich also has a channel. It's Take Action Trading. It is in description. So please go and support this awesome big guy. He is also sharing the value in there. He hasn't uploaded in a long time because, as you know, we just shared a little bit. He's going through some rough patch because of his poor time management skills. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rich. No, it's all good. It's all good. In a couple of weeks, I I'd like money, to think. I just need to put you out there sometimes still. <laughs> uh, but no, um, he is an awesome guy. He's sharing so much value with the traders. And it's just like that, you know, I can relate to Rich so much because we've been through so many like similar, similar things because we've been in the industry for a long time. So we, I feel like we've done it all, you know, like all demo trading props, blowing accounts, risking for a biscuit and all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> it's part oh, of the yeah. journey, right? It's, this yeah. is how we discover the landscape. We trip over yeah. things. We bang our head a little bit. We scratch our knee. We get back up. We get bit by a Scorpio with, oh, no, they don't bite this <laughs> thing, don't they? But this is a part of, exploring yeah. the trading landscape is is if you keep your risk low you're not going to give yourself concussion you're you're going to get tiny scrapes and bruises you can come back yeah. from that you can recover from that and you'll you'll learn you know there's nothing yeah. worse than taking a big old loss and then quitting because the pain was so big you don't yeah. want to go through it again keep that pain nice and small then come yeah. back again learn how to improve on it yeah yeah i really like this one about work and life balance that you know if we don't have that defined routine then it's going to creep into your life um and it's so true because just like the last year i was managing my time poorly although i do say my superpower is to manage time correctly but i was managing it a little bit poorly and uh, my family was struggling because of that and and you know what it just hit me really hard when my my kids came to me this year and they said mom it's good to have you back it broke my heart but it also gave me that peace that now they have their mom back and it was just like the best feeling ever you know because mom is back and i'm there for my kids again so guys be very very careful when don't let the trading overtake everything mm -hmm. you know trading shouldn't be 12 hours at the screen sitting there doing everything you know being going crazy and all that no it's it's about freedom, right? We we are striving for the freedom. Um, so yeah, look at that, Hannah. She's so cheeky. I am going to get her in trouble. <laughs> thanks for sharing value plus being real here. Oh, thanks, Hannah. She's my inspiration. She's just the best. <clears throat> well, look at that expectation, Rich. I was hoping mm. to scale every month. Mm. Okay. Okay. Oh, so okay. Uh, if you scale every month. What you've done is you've doubled the amount you have to lose and that means in a year without compounding you would have made 1200 percent return on a typical prop model 1200 mm. percent return anna what are the best in the world making oh uh, i mean i don't know like if you look at the real traders what they're making mm. it <laughs> I don't want to say any numbers because I'm going to be shouted at. You know, okay. like last year. Well, I'll say my number. Last year, I made 30, almost 35%. Okay. So that was me. That was my yearly return that like on my personal account. And I think it's a good return. Some will shout at me and say, you're a terrible trader. What is 35% and all that? You know, I have made more. I have made less. In my first years of trading, I was in a minus. You know, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost a lot of money. And if I count in how much money I spend on the stupid courses, 
<laughs> oh. That's even like that. Um, but no, the, the good thing now is I have covered all my losses. I have I have covered everything what I've paid for the courses and I have made my money now. So mm -hmm. like, you know, I'm in the stage where making 34% a year, almost 35. Um, Cause you know, I want to say bigger numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah i think it's still good because i know like how hard it was like it was yeah. mental okay so that's about three percent a month yeah two, two, two and a half to three percent a month now i i can this is the one thing i can beat you with anna i actually made about 40 percent last year but wow. however however i will say <laughs> that my my pot was this big and Anna's part was was absolutely so. I I made forty percent of about one pound twenty, and Anna made thirty five percent of a, probably a bigger part than that. So, it yeah. all comes down to how big that account is. If you think you can double it every single month, let your yeah. track record prove to you that you either yeah. can or you can't. You don't need us to tell you what you can do. What you need is people to share their honest opinion of their experience, and then you measure your experience mm -hmm. against that and then after a while you have this lovely little filter in your mind and once you get a bit of experience you can work out who's telling you porcupines and who's telling you their truth and then yeah. you use those decisions to position yourself better moving forward yeah. and uh, if you're making 100 percent a month then please tell me how because how? I, um, me too i want to know i want to yeah. know as well like, I'm happy with two or three percent a month. If I can do two or three percent a month, I will be a bajillionaire in ten years from now. I will I will use all the prop firms, I will scale all the capital, yeah. I'll build that personal capital, and I will be I'll be making a very, very great return to do some incredible and wonderful things with. And I can do that on two to three percent. So that's mm -hmm. where my expectations are. And now I'm not reaching for the stars and disappointed if I'm only getting 30 foot in the air. Mm. Yeah. Again, you know how we always go back to these realistic expectations? Isn't that crazy? Like, because yeah. now we know, we know the expectation and like having, you know, scaling every month. Because like, if you're trading with the fibers, you can scale your accounts and you need to make 10%. So it's like, is it really realistic to scale every month? <laughs> no. <laughs> if you get week like this, like I, I'm having right now, right? So like a terrible week, um, then definitely you're not going to be scaling. <laughs> So it's like, yeah, I mean, you can scale. I think my fastest scaling one was last year in June. I literally scaled my account in two weeks. So that was like mental. Um, that was when actually Pound was dropping like mad last year and I was shorting. <laughs> wow. Two weeks. Yeah. You scaled in two yeah. weeks. Yeah, that was mental. That was crazy. Um, that was just like before the the, the live trading event so oh yeah yeah no wonder you had a smile on your face when you got to the live trading event that was the first time i met you and you were yeah. you were grinning from ear to ear you didn't tell me that you scaled in two weeks yeah so, yeah nice. hey look look who's uh look who's joined us in chat Abeko, hello this is the fibers community manager here oh we have so many celebrities joining us <laughs> <friends>. <laughs> I love, look at the crowd. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh, and look at that. We also have Alex in the house. He's also the trader success in the fibers. Look at that. Alexander is here. <laughs> Good to have you. Um, Jan says you can work at the hedge fund. I think because I made like 34, 35% last year, I can work at the hedge funds for sure. Yeah. But I am building my track record. I really want to prove myself that you know I can be better trader um and um and yeah and my goal is always to leave prop firms behind and trade personal funds and just be the be the yeah. boss of my I trading knew you were that. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that this is you yeah. this is when you know you spend too much time on calls with Anna when you yeah. know that she's gonna I'm the boss I'm the boss of my trading Anna I'm conscious we've we've ran a little bit over on this stream so give our traders give our audience one thing one word of advice that you mm. just think will really help them um with their trading journey leave them with that mm. leave with that well first i just want to quickly congratulate um fx morpheus for getting shorts on ej wow. and um nice. uh 
100 pips and now look at that um out for drinks now <laughs> enjoy <laughs> enjoy your trading profits um so if i can give advice is is it like one thing or I can just a little bit go on like a little preaching you thing? Can, you can go on a little bit of that and it's just share okay. your experience. It's not advice. It's share your experience. Just you can go on a little, little rant. Okay. Little rant here. Okay. So I would say, as you can hear me and Rich, we always go back to realistic expectations. So that is number one thing. When you are a trader, make sure you have real Number two would be give yourself enough time. And when I say enough time, it's not a day, week, month, six months. Give yourself a proper time where you are able to focus on collecting data, learning about yourself, learning who you are as a trader when it comes to managing your emotions. And number three would be, be a good time manager where trading doesn't take over your life and you're not just staring in the screen all the time, but you're enjoying your family. So that would be my three things realistic expectations give yourself enough time and manage your time well good i think that's really good i think that's really good and to end it look we see rich you're still in gbp usd break even or let it tp brilliant well done you certainly done a lot better than me i got stopped out on this trade abeka i saw that you put in that please say that we're long euro usd at the moment we'll have oh. a quick look at this um but this is again i was close to the volume if the market runs from here it's just mm -hmm. one trade. Uh, I've got a zone on this. I have no idea why I have a zone on this, but I have a zone on this for some reason. So there was obviously <laughs> something no I was looking at. Uh, let's let's trace this back quickly, see what we were seeing. So we're coming into this zone. Where does this zone come That's from? That's a professional trader. I have a zone, but I have no idea why I have it in there. <laughs> nice. I, I can see I have this zone from the daily. I have okay. this low here. And it was a big inverse head and shoulders pattern. So we have a left shoulder. We have a beautiful big head. And then it comes all the way up. And it would be looking for yeah. an anticipated buy from this level as an almighty zone, which is basically here. But I don't really want to be the trader that is trading like mm -hmm. this. This is this is a swing trade, right? I don't I don't swing trade, but I think that makes I think that makes up for a swing trade. Um, but if you manage to catch the bottom, I like. Congrats. Genuinely, congrats. Yeah. I tried to do this on GU. I'm not going to keep chasing it. And this was my four-hour zone. The market came in, printed this beautiful little pin bar, this bullish little pin bar here. And I thought this is the opportunity to go higher. The market moved yeah. a little lower. And then it is what it is. Now it's outside of my plan. I'm not going to touch it. Um, yeah. One good loss. That's what I promised I'll take on stream. One mm. good loss. And that's what this is. Yeah. Still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, Beko. Like he's literally talking uh, because there's a reason to long desperate <laughs> desperation kicking in, and that's what I said. Like how we draw the zones and we have buy setups on, and then we go to the lower zone, lower zone, and then you're mm -hmm. desperate. You're thinking this is the zone it's gonna go. This is the zone. It's like Abeko, just have a slap, take a loss <laughs> if you're long, <laughs> be a man, and don't let desperation to take over. <laughs> That's my Friday advice to Becca. Anna's being harsh. <laughs> oh my goodness. I still love you, Becca. I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So I think we're going to end the stream here. Just want to say thank you so much, guys, for being here, for having a good chat with us. Um, me and Rich, we absolutely love to have these raw conversations. Uh, we come unprepared in here. <laughs> we just wing it. <laughs> And just um just talk and share um but we are going to be here next week i'm going to be home so i'll be able to share more <laughs> definitely i'll be back to my normality like i just need my normality back i need my my space my needs i need my treadmill my fake steps rich okay i need my day <laughs> So, but thank you so much, guys. Have a great weekend. Remember to do your daily ASR, your weekly yep. ASR. If you're not in my Telegram group, I will put the link in description because it's not there just yet. And you can join my Telegram group and I will share my weekly review with you, just like a process, what I do. Um, and I think this is going to be a good one because this week was emotional damage. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's going to be a good one, hopefully. Um, so yeah, thanks guys uh, for joining and I will see you the next week.
Right? Brilliant. Yeah. Right. We'll see you next week. Thanks so much. Okay. Right. Yes. Bye.